And there we go. I hope everyone can see my screen. Fantastic. Well, welcome to Unmuddle at Two Years. And um, you know, I wanna thank Jamee and Tiffany Delgado for hosting the webinar as part of Close It. And I guess a little housekeeping just before we get started. <clears throat> we have a packed, we really packed the agenda today. And so we'll be limiting Q&A to Zoom chat. So if, if any of the speakers can answer your questions in real time, we will do just that. And if not, we're recording the webinar and we'll be sure to get back to you. And uh, Tiffany is, is producing the webinar today. So please message her if you need technical help. Thank you, Tiffany. So I'm Julian and um, you know, looking at the, the list of folks who are attending here today, it really does feel like old home week. So many of you on this Zoom are friends and colleagues who I've worked you know, with in the trenches and on policy to leverage community colleges as a resource for workforce development. And I'm, I'm so glad and grateful that you're making the time to be here today. So thank you all. So the Unmuddle Marketplace is, is designed to make it easy for learners and employers to work with community colleges. And the name Unmuddle references the millions of working learners in the muddle. Um, people with you know, one or three jobs or unemployed who, who lack resources and time and a sense of the return on investment for training. And so we make it easy for these individuals and others to benefit from what community colleges have to offer. Um, Unmuddle is a, is a skills to jobs marketplace, see? Um, so uh, getting people the skills they need to succeed is core to what we do. And we really reduce learning to the, the most basic element of a course. So what's the course that's gonna help you get a decent job or onto a path that will get you there? And we built Unmuddle with the workforce or the or non-credit side of community colleges people need alternatives to the traditional academic route. But for employers, Unmuddle also offers a single point of access to a network of community colleges. And this is particularly compelling to national and multinational corporations that are, you know, that are looking to source and train a diverse workforce. Unmuddle is a three-sided marketplace. So, and my role with Unmuddle is to engage the various sides, the employers, colleges, partners that feed us learners, to, to ensure that each partner gets most, the most out of the marketplace, both individually and then as a collective. So we're excited to be at this inflection point in our development and you know, for, what the, you know, for what the future holds as we expand on Muddle Network nationwide. Unmuddle was conceived in 2019 and had its initial product release in 2020. And, and today we have over 200 courses and 47 employers that have hired for these courses. And our, our initial colleges are the innovators, the, the early adopters who have seeded and co-designed the marketplace. And you'll hear from, from the leaders of um, our partner colleges later in the webinar. You'll also hear from four new partners who are joining forces to, to help us establish Unmetal as a marketplace to, to train thousands, if not millions of Americans and, and grow and transform the economy. So I'd like to turn it over now to my co-host, Dr. Erica Barrero from Central New Mexico Community College. Erica has played a key role in the build out of Unmuddle and I'm gonna leave it to Erica to explain. Thank you, Julian. And hello to everybody who is joining to us today. Uh, I am really excited about today as we share the release of a new report that documents the two-year journey that we have been on in creating the Unmuddle Marketplace. There are two key stakeholders that have really helped build the Unmuddle Marketplace. The first group is the Unmuddle Steering Committee, which is comprised of the partner college presidents. They have driven the vision for the Unmuddle Marketplace and the partnership. The second group is the Unmuddle Champions who have helped inform the design of the marketplace and have coordinated their campus team members in executing this design. In my current role as the Future of Work Strategist for Central New Mexico Community College, I've helped lead not only our college efforts uh, with Unmuddle, but as I have also served as the Unmuddle Champion Lead. Uh, we dubbed ourselves the Unmuddle Champions when we realized that we were going to have to champion 
uh, for the investments and the transformations that would be required of our uh, respective colleges in order to realize the vision of Unmuddle. For almost two years, the Unmuddle champions have met biweekly to build bridges. Bridges between our technologies, our financial systems, our processes, between non-credit and credit programs, and between our colleges. And what we have come to appreciate more than anything is that Unmuddle has served as a catalyst for much needed change in our approaches to workforce training and education and in the way that we collaborate with other community colleges. We have learned so much from each other. And while it is difficult to fully capture the scope and scale of our journey together, we are so excited about the recently published report which documents our journey and key learnings to date. And so now it is my honor and privilege to invite to the stage Holly Zanville, author of this report, as well as several other research articles on the emerging new landscape of the work and learn ecosystem. Holly is currently research professor and co-director of program on skills, credentials, and workforce policy in the Institute of Public Policy at George Washington University. Welcome, Holly. Oh, you're muted, Holly. There we there go. go. Oh, good. <laughs> first things first. Thanks so much, Erica, and hello, everyone. I've worn many different hats in higher education in my long career, and one of my favorites, frankly, is the researcher hat, which is what I pulled off the coat rack when I was asked to write a report on the unmuddled community college network that has been working with the intermediary called Social Tech for nearly two years. The request was to take a snapshot of unmuddled as it neared its two-year milestone to provide insights to the Community College Collective and to many outside wanting to understand what Unmuddled is. I actually began thinking about the task as a long road trip in the Unmuddled car, of course, an electronic car, uh, <laughs> that was going to extend for a few months. I knew this would require a lot of looking through the rearview mirror because a lot preceded the launch of Unmuddled last November. And I'd be looking carefully at the car itself, what has been built and I'd be looking through the windshield forward facing at where the car would be going and considering things like how fast could the car go, what roadblocks were ahead, and was this model really up for the next stages of the journey? With that came the inevitable questions researchers tend to ask, like who's using the product? How smooth is the ride so far? Who's fixing the car when it needs fixing? Who's plotting the future journey? Enough, I think, with the car metaphors. The second thought I had when I realized that writing this report was going to be a journey looking backward at the present and going forward was thinking about taking a series of snapshots. And I started to think about selfies. I was going to interview the leadership of the unmodeled community, the seven community colleges in NISOD, and ask them how are things going three months post public launch of Unmuddled. That would mean engaging them in conversations about whether the vision was being realized how unmodeled might be fine-tuned, what have been, been the biggest challenges for their campuses and for the collective, and what all of this might mean for the future. In a way, we were lining up to take selfies, looking together and candidly at many aspects of unmodeled. Well, the result of all of this, driving in the proverbial unmodeled car across the country of unmodeled to look at what has been built and where all of this is going and taking pictures along the way is the unmodeled report. And those of you uh, who have requested a copy will receive it right after this webinar. So two things you're gonna note as soon as you see the report, it's very purple <laughs> and it's long, 107 pages. Well, it's purple because it's the main color of the Unmodeled logo. And it's long because this is a pretty complex enterprise with many moving parts. There are five sections in the report and two appendices. We know that all this information is not that important to all of you, but we want you to know what's in the report. Some of you will want to know who is involved in the Community College Collective Network. That information is in section one, along with messages from the President's Council, the Champions Group, Social Tech CEO and me, and there are more than 160 people who are referenced in this first section that you'll, you'll be able to uh, see. 
Some of you may be particularly interested in the planning. How did the colleges come up with this particular solution? What does an innovation futures lab look like when it focuses on community college issues? That's section two. Section three gets into the design of the model and operationalization. Colleges that want to consider joining on model in the future will need to understand the model, especially the 19 common principles and perspectives of operating on model that the founding colleges have come up with and their good neighbor policy to trust one another in putting quality courses up at the unmodel marketplace and to commit to counting toward a credential courses that are taken by learners at any of the colleges in the collective. Section four then gets into issues, the many issues the colleges face. Many, probably most of you who are joining us today know the issues well around non-credit and credit siloing and the often negative results of that. Revenue and policy models that do not support non-credit coursework in most states. Problems providing adequate wraparound services for non-credit students because too often non-credit students are treated differently than for credit students and growing competition among education providers in the marketplace. This section was drawn from interviews with all of the colleges in NISOD last fall. The interviews appear in their entirety in an appendix B because we wanted to make it easier for those of you who want to find these interviews literally at the end of the report. Section four then is presented in themes, lots of them. Wish there were not so many difficult, troublesome issues, but that is a reality that colleges struggle with. For those of you who are not as familiar with the issues, read some of these and see how the community college leaders talk about them in their own words. And last, section five, the let's look forward section, what's coming next now that Unbuttle is built. Is built. The colleges in the interviews with me in February identified what the priorities are for next steps. National marketing, so students know about this unique set of opportunities. Getting more good content up at the e-commerce marketplace. Bringing on more colleges and more employers to Unmodel and setting up metrics and assessing progress. Section five stands back to assess whether the information collected in this report warrants an optimistic or frankly a more sobering looking snapshot or to put this in 24th first century lingo a smiling emoji a straight faced emoji or a worried emoji is unmodeled really on course for success based on what we learned in the report or should we be waving a yellow flag or even a red flag because there are many roadblocks there is growing competition from other learning platform providers and students may not easily find their way to these colleges. And there may not be the resources needed to fully realize the vision quickly enough as the nation struggles to recover economically from the pandemic recession. And so many are pinning their hopes on community colleges to stand at the front lines to help. So we should not minimize the hard lift ahead. My takeaway is one of cautious optimism because there are already many solutions underway to try to address key challenges in this work. As examples, the unmodeled colleges are working actively to coordinate and in some cases consolidate their non-credit and credit departments. The colleges are putting up more skills courses well aligned to good jobs. The colleges are working to ensure that their wraparound services do meet student needs. Plans are underway to move forward for national marketing and the leadership is stopping to reflect on progress, pulling in data to keep improving the product. My take is this is not a group that's afraid to look at the data, whether it's good or not so good data. So these and many other indicators covered in the report are cause for optimism, I think. Though the work ahead will be challenging for the colleges, the employers, students, faculty, and the intermediaries that are trying to help the collective succeed. As I close my remarks, I want to disclose a perspective that I brought to the Unmodel report which you will not see in 107 pages because it's personal. A personal respect and gratitude for community colleges born from two opportunities that shaped my professional life. Early in my career, I had been unemployable for months in an oversupply hiring pool of other baby boomers with a master's degree in English when Mountain View Community College in Texas hired me as an adjunct instructor to teach freshman composition and sophomore literature at night. I'm sure all of your favorite topics <laughs> in college. The community college gave me the opportunity to teach 
which is what I thought I wanted to do full time for a career. Those experiences helped me to see that I did not really want to teach full time literature and they provided me the opportunity more importantly to see the challenges of students coming to the community colleges up close and personal meeting so many diverse students who needed so many opportunities really changed my professional life. Five years later, I was halfway through my PhD dissertation at the University of Minnesota. My fellowship had ended and it was time to get back to work. My advisors told me to look for work in a smaller venue because no place in Minneapolis, St. Paul, they said, would hire a woman for an administrative position. So I found my way to Kirkwood Community College in Iowa in the final interview of the day with the president. He took a cursory look at my resume, threw the pages into the air, <laughs> and waited for the papers to float down to his desk. Then he leaned forward to challenge me with one question. What makes you think you can relate to my students and to my faculty? It actually was a fine question, I thought. In an instant, I knew that the University Career Center, which had instructed me to remove all the non-professional jobs I had had working my way through school and life, was wrong. I had removed an essential part of my journey, the parts of my journey that some people would value even if the university did not. So I told him about the 20 jobs that had been removed from my resume, told him I believed I could relate to his students and his faculty and why. And then he extended his hand and said, you're hired. It was my first administrative job, department head of their grants office. So in full disclosure, community colleges are in my history in an important way. They gave me opportunities when others would not. I believe this is true for so many people. This is the culture of community colleges, a culture of opportunity. So when I was writing the Unmodeled Report, I was looking through my own rear view mirror, trying not to let my values impact this series of snapshots to capture Unmodeled's progress. I'll be happy to answer questions about the report for any of you who want to contact me in the future. But right now, I'm looking forward to Paul Fain's asking his questions of the Unmuddled leaders on today's panel. So Erica, it's back to you. Thank you so much, Holly. Um, thank you for your incredible work on this report and also for sharing your personal uh, journey with uh, Community College. Uh, I am very pleased to be able to welcome Paul Fain to our virtual stage to host the next portion of our webinar. Paul is a veteran higher education journalist and analyst who focuses on the connections between education and the American workforce. He worked for many years with Inside Higher Education and is now editing The Job, a new publication of Open Campus. Welcome to the stage, Paul. Thanks, Erica, and, and thanks everybody for having me. I'm excited to be here. Uh, I've already written about Unmuddle because I think it's a model to watch. I think the skills to jobs marketplace is uh, is one that an idea that just makes sense. The, it's an impressive group of community college partners. Uh, we're going to be hearing from them in just a second, and I really like the idea of transcending geography as the nation works toward an unprecedented and hopefully inclusive economic recovery. So without further ado, we have a, we have a lot of folks to get to here. So I'm going to jump right into it. And uh, first uh, question is for Chancellor Lee Lambert of Pima Community College, one I know that has been working across state lines in the past uh, and in this project as well. Chancellor Lambert, um, just in terms of the role community colleges play in workforce development, what, what made sense to you about this partnership? Why did you jump on it? Well, good morning, everybody, or afternoon, depending on your time zone. And thanks for the question, Paul. Uh, so at, at Pima Community College, we've been focused on three interlocking questions. So where's the puck going? Uh, what story is the data and evidence telling us? And what problem are we trying to solve? So when Parmender approached me with this concept, it was not too difficult to say, okay, I love it. You know, it's a blank sheet. How do we put together a solution that, that leverages the technology and serves the tens of millions of working learners and learning workers that are not being served, especially those who have some college no degree or in low wage uh, dead end types of uh, opportunities. So developing a skills uh, to jobs marketplace made a lot of sense, overlaying the technology and then being able to create true micro pathways, create more of these shorter term opportunities and also to work with like-minded colleges who really want to solve the problems for our learners, because that's 
what's going to have to happen for us to get our country back on track. So I'm so excited to be part of this and be glad to talk more into the future. I know I only have two minutes, so I'll stop there. Thank you for the question. Thanks, Chancellor Lambert. I appreciate it. Um, next, I'm going to turn to Tracy Hartzler, president of Central New Mexico Community College and the chair-elect of On Muddles President's Council. Um, so, President Hartzler, Hartzler, how is skills-based education part of the community college role now, and, and where do you see that going in the future? Sure. That, well, thanks for the question, and I, I certainly appreciate hearing from my colleagues and, and so many of the uh, folks in the chat. You know, skills-based education is just part of the core of community colleges. So we've always been doing this in different ways. And, and uh, skills-based education is really about taking knowledge and making it applied. Again, we've been doing it across uh, our history and it's core of who we are. Um, and it's the way that students get to speak to employers and be able to show uh, what they know. We know that um, today, we know that employers are looking at not only degrees and certificates, but skills, and they demand um, comp, they demand competencies. And we know that our students, who are mostly part-time students, uh, they demand of us uh, skills, not only at the end of their certificate or degree or training program, but at, you know, at the time that they earn that module or complete that module or course. So our, our current role of looking at skills-based education, I would say it would, has, is evolving, uh, certainly based on technology and the needs both of our students and employers. And so what I find incredibly um, exciting about in Muddle and our partners here is that we're able to take our skills-based uh, programs, we're able to um, really divide them up into competencies where adult learners and mostly working learners are able to look and make direct links between what they learn uh, or what they expect to learn and what employers want to seek. So I think what's uh, really important about Unmuddle, uh, allowing us to build on the strong programming, not only at CNM, but all of our partners to be able to connect with learners, to be able to connect with national employers, uh, and to be able to, to uh, I'd say, help students better describe what those competencies are. So when you ask what our role is as um, going into the future, I think it's about connections. It's about students and employers connecting using community colleges as a um, reputable uh, uh, provider of education and training with strong history, strong roots in community, strong supports for students to help them uh, overcome any barriers that they're, they're encountering to, again, uh, uh, meet those employer needs. And, and employers can quickly validate uh, through our programs. And it doesn't matter if you're going to Pima or San Juan or CNM or San Diego. We can all work together. And that's, I think, what's expected to, of us in this national uh, in, in our in our current setting, uh, to be able to show how skills can translate um, across boundaries, as you noted, uh, into this new uh, and help our students uh, reach into these new markets and, and really develop skills. So um, that's a little bit about, I think, where we've been, but certainly where we're going. And this is a great uh, example of that. Thanks for that, President Hertzler. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, we're moving fast here. I'm turning to Tony Pendergrass, president of San Juan College. Um, you know, one of the most rural, if not the most rural, of the unmuddled colleges. Um, it's in New Mexico, and one that serves a largely Native American population. Uh, how do you see participation on Muddle addressing the equity agenda of two-year colleges in the nation? Thank you. At, at San Juan College, we are proud that we are a majority minority serving institution. Unmuddle allows us to provide adult learners with a wealth of options that are in demand by employers in the national marketplace. And these are things that we could not offer individually. The best, we all know this, but the best pathway out of poverty is a well-paying job. The overarching goal of Unmuddle is to connect learners to good jobs quickly. For example, there are several courses on Unmuddle that enable learners to be hired or promoted just after one or two courses. And this helps us to collectively strive to increase economic mobility for all of our learners. We know that this, as a result of the pandemic, remote working will have a much larger presence in our society, and it will enable individuals who live in rural areas to have more options for employment. Community colleges are perfectly poised for unmuddle 
because we offer all of the wraparound services and support that many of our learners need, such as affordable courses, free online tutoring, and access to resource centers, childcare, and career placement services. Thanks for that. You, you know this is an important project when you get this many impressive community college leaders together. Uh, it's exciting for me. I'm going to turn now to Stephen R. Gonzalez, the interim chancellor of the Maricopa Community College District. So going from rural to, to urban here. How does Unmuddle help you compete in the non-credit training space? As, as Julian mentioned, non-credit uh, an opening here. And how does that link to the new bachelor's program that Maricopa offers? Well, good morning, Paul, and or good afternoon, as um, Dr. Lambert suggested, depending on where you are. Um, so first, I'm serving as interim chancellor of Maricopa Community College District and serving as president of Gateway Community College, one of the 10 in the system. We made a decision to join on model early on and uh, serve as one of the founding colleges. And so we're really proud of the opportunity to do that, specifically for non-credit um, training space. Um, this gives us the opportunity to really, um, I would say, to, to expand our ability to do this across a wide scale. Um, typically, we struggle to do this in the community college level because it's whether it's funding um, or other resources that are available to us. And in this space, it allows us to take some of our programs and to put them on a scale that we have a difficult time achieving. So we're really happy to be in this space to provide that entry level training and um, CEUs as uh, working learners advance in their careers. Um, the other place that this gives us an opportunity is this, this it, it gives us a, a chance to innovate. It gives us a chance to experiment. We can, we can put you know, uh, courses and programs in the Unmuddle to test their viability. So it, it serves as a model for us to, to test whether it's feasible for us to, to bring this perhaps in a face-to-face -face environment or to expanded, you know, across our own internal ways of offering these programs. Um, and as far as the uh, the new bachelor's degree go, uh, in case everybody on here didn't know this, but last week our governor signed a bill that allowed community colleges in the state of Arizona uh, to begin to offer the four-year baccalaureate degree. And so I would say it's, it's a little early for me personally to say how Unmuddle might help us in this space. Um, it, I think there's always the possibility for that, but I, I would I think it'd be premature in, in, in speaking to how that might work. But I would just say I'm, I'm really excited that we have one more avenue, one more point of access for our students. And Unmuddle is certainly a tool that can help us in that space achieve what this uh, law is allowing us to do. So thank you again, and I'm honored to be here with my colleagues this morning. Thanks, Chancellor Gonzalez. Appreciate it. Um, as President Pendergrass mentioned, uh, a lot of workers looking to get skilled up quickly uh, with short, short courses and programs. And, and I'm going to turn to Kevin Drum, President of SUNY Broom, uh, to talk a little bit about that issue. Um, President Drum, why is focusing on short-term workforce upgrades, workforce training, certifications, and micro-credential credentials important right now in this moment? Well, particularly uh, in this uh, moment, uh, Paul, as we uh, look at a post-COVID future, whatever that's really going to look like, uh, I think certainly people who, who have been out of the workforce uh, are going to look to get back into the workforce, you know, as quickly as they can, at least hopefully. Uh, and certainly when the stimulus runs out, and, you know, that will happen and who knows what impact the stimulus is, is having. Uh, and I think the, the uh, higher education world, uh, actually, if you look at what some of the uh, prognosticators have, uh, have put out there, you know, even before uh, COVID, uh, is that uh, like my own son, you know, is looking at uh, college now, going to work, you know, college later, because uh, he, he just wants to get out into the, into the workforce and there's plenty of opp opportunity for, for him right now. And, and from a community college perspective, as you all uh, probably know, when the economy booms, it, it tends to have the reverse impact on, on community colleges. So this puts us out there in a space that someone who is working uh, or wants to change careers, uh, you know, 
they, their family's a little older now and uh, you know somebody they want to get back into the workforce they don't want to look at spending two or four years to do it the opportunity costs are, are greater than ever probably uh, so to give them a short-term uh, track to either getting a job or improving their job prospects from where they are I think is, is important for, uh, for the nation. And you know, we tend to look at, well, community colleges were that way with the two-year degree. Well, as, as the pace of, uh, of the world picks up, uh, two years is gonna seem an inordinately long time for, for some folks. So from our access mission even, to be able to provide access to those who just can't devote that two years or four or five years in the traditional sense for a part-time degree, uh, it, it increases uh, access and, and further um, advances our mission as, as community colleges to reach a market that otherwise uh, might have looked at us as even two years is too long or three or four years part time that's, that's just too long. So I, I think it advances the community college uh, mission nicely. You know, believe it or not, we're actually a little ahead of schedule. So I want to ask a super quick uh, follow up, uh, President Trump. I mean, just to get a sense of the scale here. I mean, Obviously, we're, we're all seeing polling of folks are interested in short term programs, but how substantial do you think growth in that space is, is going to be if I can ask you to speculate. Do we still have President Trump. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize you were directing him. I thought you were directing it at the panel. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah, I just was doing a quick follow up on, on the kind of the scope of the possibility for expansion in short term. I, I think certainly from what we're seeing in our on our credit side right now, which is uh, for uh, you know, here in the Northeast, we tend to be upside down. You know, our, our major market has been the traditional student, we, we, more in the old junior college model, especially in the Northeast with the whole university ethos here. Uh, but all of us, all of a sudden, we're seeing a major tick up in our interest from adult students, even for our traditional credit programs, just boom in one year. So that would pretend uh, that the demand for the short term uh, offerings will also, uh, it, it's been going up, it's been a trend, you know, for some time and, I, and like so many trends uh, that we've noticed in this uh, COVID period, they're just being ramped up. They're, you know, they're they're being energized, or, you know, or uh, you know, get, get gas to the pedal uh, as a result of COVID trends that were already there. So one would assume, uh, in this field as well, because it was already a growth area, uh, that it's going to ramp up tremendously uh, with uh, in the post-COVID era. Thanks for indulging that. Appreciate it. Uh, so we're going to bounce from New York State out to California uh, for Chancellor Carlos Cortez, San Diego Community College District. Uh, Chancellor Cortez, how does Unmuddle advance the notion of multiple points of entry for students to junior colleges? Good morning, everyone. Just to clarify, I'm the president of San Diego College of Continuing Education. I'll be the incoming chancellor, so I'm the chancellor designate. Um, uh, uh, good morning from the West Coast. Um, the the ever evolving landscape of uh, higher education, uh, particularly in the community college sectors, requires that we meet students where they're at. Um, uh, in light of competition from proprietary institutions who are designing their organizations um, to serve students in, in in modalities that that meet them where they're at, um, we need to be equally competitive. Um, uh, you know, short-term courses, online programming, externships, uh, multiple points of entry and exit, stackable certificates, um, articulation arrangements between non-credit and credit um, are all critical, um, uh, critical design elements um, that will allow us to recapture a, a large segment of the student population that we've lost. Um, as the incoming chancellor, um, I like myself, like any, like most any educational administrators, um, challenge, um, particularly in light of the COVID closure, um, with declining enrollments. And in California, our our focus has shifted um, um, uh, inflexibly towards serving uh, young people in our community college system. We are increasingly <clears throat> providing concurrent enrollment and serving students who are co-enrolled in high school and spend a significant amount of our time and resources targeting individuals coming out of 12th grade. Um, and we have in many cases um, abandoned our commitment to adult learners, um, to working adults. 
And I believe that the Unmuddle Partnership provides us with an opportunity to begin to recapture um, uh, those uh, those enrollments. Um, the, the reality is, is, is you know, in terms of our cost, in terms of um, uh, you know our nonprofit status, in terms of our commitment to serving underserved populations, uh, we should be um, uh, the educational institution of choice of working adults. But unfortunately, um, we have um, in, in, over the years ceded more and more enrollment um, because students prefer. Um, what these proprietary institutions have to offer. And they are willing oftentimes to pay tens and tens of thousands of dollars a year um, in order um, to receive an educational experience um, that meets their needs and, and, and meets them where they're at, as opposed to uh, uh, the, the, the oftentimes not student-centered approach to instructional design that we take in public institutions. So multiple points of entry is key and critical at my college, for example, um, within each of our pathways. Um, uh, welding, for example, there are seven stackable certificates. Auto, there's seven stackable certificates. Nursing, there's eight stackable certificates and students can come in and out and complete you know, three to six month career education programs um, uh, that will allow students then to return to work or to continue their studies or some hybridized form of, of, of uh, of, of, uh, of a career in college development. So I hope to answer the question. I'm happy to follow up if you have any further questions. It does, and uh, you know, that stackability piece is so key. I, I think, you know, watching Unmuddle develop, we'll be watching how that helps enable that. And uh, President Cortez, sorry for jumping the, the gun on your new upcoming role. Uh, congrats on that. And, and we'll hope you can keep in touch uh, in your chancellorship. So I'm turning now to Edward Leach the Executive Director of the National Institute for Staff and Organizational Development, NISAD. Um, you know, NISAD has been working with the two-year sector for a long time. What, what about Unmuddle really drew you to working with them and to doing this partnership? Yeah, thank you for that question, Paul, and uh, good morning or good afternoon to, to everyone. For those in the audience that might not be aware of NISAD, um, we're a community and technical college association um, that's part of the College of Education at UT Austin. And, um, you know, a, a main part of what we do is get our member colleges connected with best and promising practices um, that are materializing um, at, at any time. So when you, you've heard from previous uh, speakers, the presidents and chancellors talk about the many benefits associated with, with Unmuddle. So it was a no brainer for us to want to make sure that our member colleges and colleges beyond our members, to be quite honest with you, um, knew about this fantastic opportunity when it came about. I think there's another piece of this too, and, and more on a personal level, and that is, you know, I've known uh, Dr. Perminder Jassel since her days uh, when she was back with the uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and I was running the League for Innovations uh, Conference on Information Technology. And I've known Dr. Jasso to be a, a, a very high quality person and do outstanding work for, for many, many years. So when she came calling and asked if, you know, I wanted to have NICE, I'd be a part of a project. Uh, my initial answer was, absolutely. Uh, and then my next response was, you know, what's the project? And then as I learned more and more about it and, you know, all the things that you folks have heard about the benefits of uh, Unmuddle, uh, it was, a, again, a no-brainer for uh, us to want to make sure that we could help um, Unmuddle get the word out uh, uh, about this wonderful opportunity for not only uh, our member colleges, but other colleges as well. Thanks for that, Edward. Really appreciate it. And, and thanks to all the presidents and chancellors. Uh, that's just a phenomenal group of community college leaders. And, and congrats to Unmuddle for, for bringing everyone together. Well, and thank you so much, Paul, and, and uh, presidents and chancellors and chancellors to be and Ed. Um, that was like, a, I kept thinking that was like a, an engineering feat or something, you know, first for you, Paul, as an interviewer who digs real deep and for you, presidents and chancellors and Ed, who can clearly get, you know, carry this whole hour easily with a compelling keynote. I was just covered a lot of ground. So so appreciate your doing that, all of you. And, um, so now it's time for our new partners to say a few words. And if we had more time to plan this, 
you know, we could have had you like burst through virtual backgrounds, you know, like like this one or something. But I, then I thought, well, if we try that, maybe you know, someone would fall on their computer and it could be some sort of a, you know, hazard. So um, as I said earlier, a metal a metal is a three sided marketplace, and so the partners joining forces with us today represent different sides. And so it's, it's my great great pleasure to pass pass it off to a metal founder and CEO and my partner in crime, Raminda Jassel, uh, to introduce our first partner, Raminda. Thank you, Julian. And thanks everyone for coming today and joining us. So from day one, Unmetal was designed with the ultimate goal of an equitable future, where instant futures are easily accessible by working learners, leading to new or better jobs, acquiring credits for college or continuing education, and earning credentials like certificates, certifications, and degrees. Unmetal Community Colleges collaborate behind the scenes, as you can see, to offer courses and eventually services and credentials to ensure sustainable futures for their college by increasing their investments in faculty and staff. As you've heard, the unmetal niche of seamless access to America's community colleges and their on-campus, in-person courses and online courses is now a reality through and metal. Today, we quantum leap forward to our goal of an equitable, sustainable future by greatly enhancing seamless access to unmetal community colleges through our national partnership with Avaca TV, the next generation TV service. This summer through Unmuddle and Avaca, Unmuddle community colleges can offer their job relevant courses, services and credentials via local TV. And more importantly, working learners, both employees and students will have access to America's community colleges from their sofas at home. Working learners can, can engage with a course like Intro to Autonomous Vehicles or get their Apple iOS or Google certification started while watching Avaca Learn TV and then head on campus for an in-person session and follow up later online via laptop or phone. Whereas employers can instantly access America's most diverse, highly qualified untapped talent in community colleges with just a couple of clicks. This summer, we'll begin rolling out in Phoenix as Avaca TV turns on in 1.4 million households. Now, I'm really delighted to introduce Todd Achilles, who is a co-founder and the president and CEO of Avaca TV. Todd, you're up. Thanks, Perminder. Um, you know, we're, uh... Uh, we're really excited about this. Uh, you know, the, the the broadband divide has really informed Avaca strategy from day one, and, uh, um, and you really have to look at this problem from two dimensions. It's it's, it's both quality of the broadband as well as cost, um, and and the problem is felt most in you know in these underserved, marginalized communities. You know, are they're either low income or low density. Um, and it's really a highly inequitable problem that, that we're trying to solve. Now, Avoc is a TV service, so we're not a substitute for, for the internet, but the idea is using this, this uh, new next-gen TV technology to be able to provide a complement or a supplement to what's out there. And it, and it really is the most, um, most efficient way to deliver video. So, you know, we've, we've, uh, uh, we've got two TV stations in Phoenix now, um, those reach about 80% of the market. So we can, we can reach, as, as Perminder said, 1.4 million homes. Um, and that's just this massive footprint to be able to, to deliver video. And our core service may be, uh, you know, as a pay TV service, but we've, you know, we've carved out purposefully to, to, you know, sort of meet our needs in the public interest, a set of uh, free services that will deliver over the air that's under the Avaca Learn um, uh, umbrella, and then specifically the channel that we'll be doing with a muddle that we're calling PATH, which is targeted to adult learners. Um, and, and, and again, you know, the, the, the potential here is part Minder laid out. It's just super exciting. Um, you know, it can be, 
it, it can be where people start and, and first learn about courses available in the local community colleges. It could be where you know, they come to watch other lectures um, after the in-person. It could be a complement to what's done in online. But it's really, you sort of think about this triad as just opening up the maximum numbers of, of possibilities here about where people go and, and, and how they learn and where they access the content. Um, and, and I think you know, one, of, one of the realities, unfortunately, is uh, you know, unemployed Americans watch twice as much TV as employed Americans. Um, and, and I think going back to um, President Cortez's point, you know, we got to meet them where they're at. Uh, and, and TV is a, is a complement or a supplement to these other mechanisms here. And, and this is why we're so excited about doing this, uh, uh, doing this collaboration with Unmodel in, in Phoenix and then expanding that to Idaho, where we currently operate and, and other markets that we're, we're launching later this year. Oh, thank you so much, Todd. It's just... Um... Amazing. I mean, we're so thrilled to be partnering with with Ivaca, and um, you know, it's I, I keep thinking next gen TV meets next gen workforce development. It's pretty cool, um, and it really is about bringing learning to where people are. I mean, that's what so much of what the college community college infrastructure that we're talking with today is all about. So, so really looking forward to it. So now is in our whirlwind tour. I'm going to shift gears and introduce Charles Haichu, who's executive executive director of the Higher Opportunity Coalition. Um, I talked about the triangle, and so Charles actually covers two sides of it. Um, the uh, with Higher Opportunity Coalition, a coalition of pretty formidable employers and amazing community partners that can help support and feed us with learners. So, Charles, without further ado, why are you here? Yeah. Thank you, Julian. Pleasure to be here and, you know, can't wait to get started with our Unmodel partnership, which we hope to implement soon. Um, I represent the Higher Opportunity Coalition, which is a group of employers, mostly Fortune 100, that are committed to hiring, retaining, and advancing opportunity youth, those 16 to 24-year-olds who are both out of work and out of school literally disconnected by definition. So uh, you may know our organization by its former name, which was a 100,000 Opportunities Initiative that was founded by Howard Schultz, then CEO of Starbucks. Back in 2015, when he was having a heck of a time with his, his entry-level pipeline, not only did he have many entry-level jobs going unfulfilled every year, but uh, he also realized the pipeline didn't reflect the diversity of his evolving marketplace. So he leaned into this issue with his CSR team and said, hey, let's really prioritize hiring these young people. And, and then he did some research and said his own challenge was shared by many of his fellow corporate leaders. And so he invited over the course of a couple of years, about 50 major corporations, mostly retail, um, hospitality and restaurant to join him. So here's what they found over the first five years of operation as reported by um, Burning Glass Technologies. Those 50 companies were responsible for hiring 250,000 opportunity youth as best estimated by uh, Burning Glass. And those companies that were part of our coalition hired at the entry level at 50% higher than the non-coalition companies. So those our coalition companies were hiring at the entry level 24% of the time they were bringing on Opportunity Youth, which sounds wonderful, particularly when you realize it's a 50% increase over their non-coalition counterparts. What both did not do well was retain or advance those young people. Um, the, the retention rate was basically a 50-50 shot for both coalition companies and non-coalition companies alike. So when I came on board, I realized, you know, that's the gauntlet that was thrown down. How do we help these companies retain and advance young people? And then with the pandemic, obviously the numbers just ballooned. We went from 4.5 million opportunity youth to 9 million between last March and last July. So that represents one out of four young people in that cohort, that 16 to 24 cohort. So the good news is we're recovering. Um, it's now one in six, 
but we're doing so unequitably. Uh, just, you know, we haven't learned the lessons of what got us here in the first place. We're continuing to hire disconnected youth, um, you know, slower and less often than we should. And we're doing it largely at the rates that we did before the pandemic. So despite all the economic reckoning, the racial reckoning, uh, the pandemic opportunities, we're not learning those lessons. So we stand to help companies learn those lessons, commit to them and measure them. When I came on to Higher Opportunity Coalition, I realized I, I always look for the anchors of evidence and the anchors of evidence were clearly out there. Um, and it, it said to me loudly and clearly, we need to source opportunity youth more systematically. So we've developed a searchable database by zip code that helps us do that. Uh, we need to think about supporting supervisors when they get hired. So can we create a training for frontline supervisors of these young people so they understand support and can align with their dreams and their challenges and help them navigate? Two, can we give, three, can we give those young people mentors while they're on the job so they learn how to navigate the corporate culture that you know, they may be facing for the first time? And then four, and this is where Unmuddle comes in, you know, if you're going to retain a young person um, who's traditionally been disconnected, you've got to show them that you care about them and you're invested in them. And the pro one of the primary ways to do that is to help them select a pathway and a set of trainings that is going to move them toward a gateway position that will avail themselves to a middle class uh, opportunity, a uh, family earning wage. So that's our goal with Unmuddle. We're hoping in the next year to launch a major five city, five flagship company effort, whereby you know 1,500 kids across uh, the country get not only you know sourced by us, but a trained sensitive supervisor, mentors trained and supported at the corporations, and then a training uh, credential, a pathway administered, supported, and you know and and brokered by Unmuddle that helps that young person stay there, care about, dedicate to their workplace and ideally advance within it. So I, you know, we have several uh, corporations very interested in playing the flagship role. We've got five cities very interested in playing and we've got several foundations interested in um, exploring how to support this. So I just wanna thank uh, Julian Parminder, for this phenomenal platform because it meets us exactly where our kids live. So thank you very much. Thanks so much, Charles. Hey, I, love, I love the way you lay it all out and it's, it's exciting. Um, uh, you know, we had a conversation yesterday with some of the colleges about the work and folks were like, yeah, but we're not focused on opportunity youth, it's adults, but you know what? Once they're in the job, these people are the same people the rest of the college is serving. I, as far as I can tell, having just come from Work, the workforce side of a college. So, you know, the supports and the thought and the, on both the corporate side and the student support side are really massive and I know will really, really help to, to, to bolster and feed us. So thank you. So, thank all you. right, well, moving right along. Oh yes, we've got to move right along. Um, our next a partner to announce is Sheree Phipps, who directs the retail management certificate for the Western Association of Food Chains. Sheree, I guess, um, yeah, you know, you're our first association partner. Obviously, employers working with you. You've done amazing work building the certificate. You have a relationship with a number of colleges, including CNM, represented by uh, Erica and, and, and President Hartzler, but would love to hear your, your a little bit about, about the association, the certificate, and why you're here today. All right, thank you. Um, I, it's really exciting to follow Charles because we want to hire the people he's interested in supporting the I, I represent the Western Association of Food Chains. It's a nonprofit association that serves employers across the US with a pure mission to advance our industry through education and leadership. 
And so for many years, we've been using a program called the Retail Management Certificate Program to upskill our entire workforce and to move people into manager and leader level jobs. So that's exactly the kind of um, pathway that somebody Charles wants to bring into an industry like ours could, uh, could see it for their future. So, but since it's our inception of using the Retail Management Certificate, we've always delivered it uh, it's an eight full course community college program, and we've always delivered it on the credit side. Uh, one of the most innovative community college partners for us is Central New Mexico Community College, who offers our eight course retail management certificate, both in a traditional time-based format and also in a pure competency-based format. And we're really excited to now be partnering with Unmuddle. We see this as a, a vehicle to further scale the retail management certificate in a really unique way for the first time ever, really maybe breaking it down to um, by using the competency-based format to maybe deliver a series of micro credentials that help people kind of skill up and either get hired or get promoted in our industry more quickly. But one of the most important features to me, and I've heard this spoken um, uh, frequently in this, and, and shout out to Roy Swift for pointing it out. One of the most important things to me is that these micro credentials can be crosswalked for credit. So even if someone is earning them very affordably and very quickly on the non credit side through Unmuddle, if they desire at some point to earn a college credential like the Retail Management Certificate and other relevant associate and bachelor's degrees, that mechanism is available. So that's why we're excited to be here. Great. Well, thanks so much, Yuri. And we're so thrilled to have you and looking forward to what you and CNM cook up, because I do think the slicing and dicing and figuring out how the non-credit side connects and feeds and there's, you know, there's a lot of talk about stacking credentials. We're actually in a position to do it, <laughs> which is kind of nice. So welcome and thank you. And thank you. Our, our next new partner, uh, Robert Matthews, is the Associate Vice President for Workforce and Economic Development at Mott Community College in Michigan. And, and you know, Mott is, for anyone who knows Community College's workforce, you're famous always for years, head of the class, trainer of choice, you know, in your region, auto industry, et cetera, et cetera. So we'd love to, you know, we want to welcome you um, on here as an associate uh, partner, associate member, and you know, we'd love to hear a couple words, Robert, about your thinking about joining forces with us and the collective. Sure, uh, thanks, Julian. I bring greetings from Michigan and from the Mott Community College family and our president, Dr. Beverly Walker Grafia. Uh, we're excited to have the opportunity to join uh, this, this network. And so as we thought about, you know, the possibilities that existed when we first started reading and hearing a little about Unmuddle, um, you know, the, the first thing is really, any partnership that's going to expand our ability to collect, to connect learners uh, to skills and credentials that then lead to employment, um, it, it feels like, you know, excuse the pun, but it's almost a no brainer. And so the ability to do that in some new and exciting ways really just stood out to us as something that we needed to, to really take some time and, and strongly consider. And I think as we've heard others say, today, reaching new audiences absolutely is something that's critical uh, for us. And not just reaching new audiences, but really the opportunity to reach audiences that uh, oftentimes may have been uh, historically left behind or excluded uh, from, you know, from the process. And so um, there's absolutely an equity piece that's at the center of this that I think, um, you know, we, we have to repeat over and over again. Um, I think one thing we learned during the, the pandemic is, of course, is everyone has had to think about transitioning, you know, to new modalities and, and changing the way that we deliver, deliver things. Um, we had opportunity to talk with groups of students at different points in time. And those students really, you know, it was like just some aha moments for, for us. But there's a group that, that were saying, we really, really feel like we're thriving in this environment, uh, having the opportunity to learn remotely. 
while there was another group that was saying that's not necessarily the best thing for us. And there are many times where we really focused on those that, you know, we deliver content to face to face. And so, you know, this is just, I think the timing of this is just perfect because it's just expanding the possibilities in some really, really great ways. And then I would say that, uh, you know, any opportunity to collaborate with like-minded institutions who want to be on the cutting edge, we're going, we, we want to talk. We want to exchange. We want to share. We want to build off of uh, you know one another, and so uh, that opportunity uh, definitely uh, was felt like something we just needed to to pursue. And so we're looking forward to what's next with Unmuddle. Um, you know the things that, that have been shared today really just sort of I would say are icing on the cake um, because these are things that we we hadn't had opportunity to consider until uh, until right now. So uh, just thankful for this opportunity. Oh, thank you so much, Robert. And I love, I love your words. Really amazing. We're so happy to have you in the Unmodeled family. Okay, well, we're really pressing over oh, even past the time. So I'm going to be really, really fast here, Ramji. I'm going to be maybe sort of slightly rude and say that um, we are, okay, so um, Holly's report is chock full of amazing data. We're going to be unpacking that to tell the story of Unmodeled as it rolls out nationally. Um, and Ramji Raghavan, who's here um, and leads Pragya Systems, our, one of our already key partners, um, will be co-hosting a webinar with us on Thursday, June 17th, that'll focus on academic and career pathways. So Ramji, if you um, wanna say a, a word or two, that'd be great, because I think we may need to move on, show our you know, info screen, and then we wanna play for you our unmuddled jingle. But please, Ramji, do tell, any thoughts about our webinar upcoming? No, thanks, Julian. Yeah, really excited about being part of this initiative. And particularly, I think our community college leaders and others spoke about, you know, supporting rapid reskilling and lifelong learning and making connections between, uh, you know, non-credit courses and for credit pathways and how they lead to, you know, longer career pathways. You know, that's what we're going to talk about and really excited to be part of it. Excellent. Well, thank you. And you know, we're, we so value our partnership with you and Pragya. And so Thursday, June 17th, same time, noon to one Eastern, same station. And, um, you know, thank you all for, for participating to all the panelists and moderators, really, Erica, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's wonderful. And I want to uh, pass it back to you to kind of wrap us up. <laughs> So we are out of time. Thanks for those that stuck uh, with us. If you have not um, yet drank the purple unmuddled Kool-Aid and you still <laughs> want to learn more, please reach out to us. We'd be happy to share more of our story. Please download the report. I think we have a slide uh, that will share how to do that. And if you are interested in becoming an unmuddled partner or learning about becoming an unmuddled partner, and joining us on this uh, journey, please reach out to Julian. Thank you, everybody. Holly, Paul, our Unmetal partners, Jamee Blevin and the Closet team, and all of you have a wonderful Friday and enjoy your weekend. Thanks, Erica. See you soon. Bye, everyone. Bye. Building opportunities got you befuddled. Log on now, we'll help you finish the puzzle. Multiple courses wrapped up in one bundle, helping you to get your futures unmuddled. Helping you to get your futures unmuddled. Helping you to get your